the committee. Two of three maritime provinces are lagging behind the rest of the country when it comes to palliative care. New Brunswick is the only maritime province with a hospice where people can spend their final days in a home-like setting. As Von Colbert reports, there's hope that may soon change in Nova Scotia. My mother um, had probably uh, as wonderful a death experience as you could ask. Fred McGinn says that's because his mother died at home without pain and surrounded by her family. His father's experience was the opposite. The family was unable to care for him, so he died in hospital after being moved from room to room. My father, like a lot of people, was in a bed that was meant for the living, not the dying. Uh, he just required uh, a home-like atmosphere at that time. And that feeling of home is what you get in a hospice, like this one opened two years ago in St. John. It's a right of every Canadian to die with dignity and in comfort and surrounded by people that love them and care, have cared for them their whole life and die according to their wishes with their goals in mind. That was the message hospice advocate and retired Senator Sharon Carstairs brought to Halifax today. The best alternative, quite frankly, is to keep people in their homes as long as they possibly can stay there. And if they can't be in their homes, then quite frankly, Halifax needs a hospice. There are hospital palliative care units across Nova Scotia, but the experience can vary widely from one to the other. And Carstairs says dying in a hospital is the least economical, costing twice as much as hospice care. The Hospice Society of Greater Halifax is already working hard on such a facility. It's received a $5 million commitment from metro area rotary clubs to pay for the building. Now it's waiting to hear from the province and capital health on yearly operational funds so that Nova Scotians can have a quality of life even in their last days. Yvonne Colbert, CBC News, Halifax. The Halifax 